Bonjour. Bonjour. I'm Kwan. I'm Wei Lun. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Gourmet Plate. Plate. So, first day in Paris or Paris, mm. hopefully I pronounce that right. A place that is known for its fine dining as well as delicious pastries and sweets. And since this is our first food vlog, let's do it right by visiting the oldest patisserie in Paris called Stohre. I know I definitely pronounced it right, I just can't seem to get the French pronunciation right. Uh, it's located really close to us, about 9 minutes walk, so we're definitely gonna walk. So fellow foodies, let's enjoy the walk and take in what Paris has to offer. As we're walking, I can't help but notice the entire town is just surrounded by this um, very old architecture. They all look really, really old and it's really impressive, really. Every turn you make, there are these buildings, they're just a random building but it looks really, really nice and they've got these cafes right underneath, you know, on the ground floor and you can see people just biking through and the traffic is quite busy considering today is a Sunday, so that's pretty interesting. Guys, this is why you don't give crap money as I was walking and filming stuff look what she has done like within a span of 15 seconds she could just walk into a pastry shop and buy a croissant that is really quick olympic speed hungry right right we're hungry okay let's just eat the croissant on that mm. on the bright side luckily she buys croissants and not bags mm. Gotta love the graffiti. I think it's right in front. I think we are there. The store behind me is the oldest patisserie in Paris store. And you can see people are already queuing up. Quite the scene there, purchasing the pastries as we speak. Now, a little bit backstory about this patisserie. It's founded by Nicolas Store in the year 1730. He was once the pastry chef for the Polish king and subsequently he was also the official baker for the French king, uh, King Louis XV. This store is known for a lot of their sweet and as you look past the glass you can see they have all sorts of pastries. They have got croissants, eclairs, curry breasts, lemon tarts, all sorts of different tarts. They look really really nice and the decor within is really very interesting because you've got that nice lady on the wall there and you look at the chandelier, it's just got this very old style sort of like very ancient look to it and i think it's really really interesting i like it i believe the interior is more or less kept roughly the same throughout the years now we've got quite a few of their very nice looking pastries some uh, very interesting ones and one of it is a signature product of theirs created by nicolas story himself so quite has gotten the goods let us go and find a nice spot to eat these pastries Okay guys, we are going to a garden to have our pastries but since it's still quite a ways away we are going to have some coffee first we are going to this place called Kitsune and it is a pretty well-known coffee spot they have brunches in Japan and uh, Korea as well, right? Yep, so let's go! So we got one flat white and one hot chocolate. I'm gonna guess this is the flat white and this is the hot chocolate. So I'm gonna put this down. Okay, let's take a look at the whether the coffee art is still intact. Uh, okay, it's not obviously because it's in takeaway format. But let's just try this. Mm. Mm. It's very smooth moderately bitter you could actually taste a lot of that milk flavor and i'm not too sure i think they added maybe some form of like vanilla taste in it more milk than coffee tasting though definitely could taste the coffee but it's more milky than coffee pretty good i'm not a coffee expert but i quite like this let's try the hot chocolate oh it's so hot warming and it tastes like a Milo. Just the chocolate flavor is more present. Nice. We're actually in the garden of Palais Royal, which was a royal palace. It's actually originally built for the cardinal 
which is one of, I think, a very high rank in the Catholic Church, I think right behind the Pope. And this was where, I think, uh, I forgot the name of the Cardinal. One of the Cardinals used to stay, and after he passed away, one of the French kings, I think, gave it to his brother, a duke. And you can see people actually uh, over here just uh, having their meal, maybe a lunch. Uh, yeah, having a coffee and then they bring their dogs here and walk their dogs. Um, you, you, you can see it's more like the trees are uh, sort of leafless because it's actually the winter. I believe during the spring it looks really really nice but there is a very nice garden in the middle and you can see there's this pretty interesting painting of a, of a lady with a slightly weirdly awkward face. <laughs> After you walk past the garden, you come to this like huge open air area and right in front of us are these columns, they are like, like an artistic installation. I think it's done by one of the artists. I'm not going to pretend that I know about French history, I really do not know. Most of them are from Google and Wikipedia. So yeah, just take a look at this. The people are just here and you can see kids just playing on this place and a lot of people, the locals, the tourists, they're just taking photos, you know, climbing as high as they can get onto those pillars, those columns. The reason why we came past this place is because we wanted to go to this garden to have store which is called Jardin de Tuileries and we also passed by a museum, a really huge one uh, the Musée de Louvre. Louvre anyway the Mona Lisa one, the one with Mona Lisa so let's go here we are at the Louvre and just walking right across, you will be able to see the very well-known pyramids. Alright, some quick facts about the Louvre. It is the largest art museum in the world. There are, I think, more than 35,000 pieces of art in there. And it is said that if you spend 30 seconds on each single art piece, you're going to take more than 6 weeks to finish the visit. Therefore, you need to have a game plan when you come to this museum. Uh, it is very well-known for, obviously, the Mona Lisa, the statue of uh, the Venus de Milo, uh, the Wrath of Medusa, the artwork, the coronation of Napoleon, the wedding at Kana and the winged victory as well. That is a statue, by the way. We are definitely not visiting a museum today because we are a food channel and we are going to eat our pastries today. So let's continue heading on. I'll show you the pyramids in a bit. Now oh, that is the pyramids that you have seen in movies or at least uh, we have seen in movies. It is really magnificent being able to see it in the flesh. But you can see that there are a lot of people today uh, taking photos and everything. So it's not as uh, clean as we have liked. Anyway, that is a very quick tour of the Louvre. Anyway, let's quickly head back to have our pastries. <sighs> Got ourselves a nice spot here, right in the middle of the garden. Got a pretty good view with the sun shining over there. But so, we are cold, totally cold. Yeah, it's cold. So let us begin and take a look at the goods. It's YouTube. Can you explain? It's for YouTube? Yes, it's for YouTube. Okay, so let me explain you. Um, the Garden of the Churi. Yes. You need an authorization to film, to film something to YouTube or Instagram or something like that. Oh. Okay, it's not a public, it's private. <laughs> hey guys, bad news. Uh, apparently, you can't film uh, in the garden. Mm. You need to get a pre-authorization. So we gotta move uh, somewhere else to do this. Ah, such a nice spot too. Anyway, see you in a bit. Ah, hope that's far enough. Uh, we are actually right between the museum and the garden now. We are out of the garden. So, hopefully we can film here. It's really cold though. Let's quickly take out the pastries. I've gone over here. Um, I would call this the most important pastry that we came to Paris for. Uh, the croissant. And... Oh, this from Store. Goodness, look at the amount of layerings on top. It looks pretty delicate, pretty well made. A little bit darker than I would have expected though. Mmm, I can smell the buttery fragrance. Let's go. Mm. Mm. The buttery fragrance. Yeah, the savory saltiness of the butter. Mm. So this is what croissant in Paris is about. 
So if you take a look at the inside, uh, there are these nice uniform air bubbles. The surface is sort of crisp, not exactly flaky, but it's got a resistance to it, a little bit hard. And the inside is chewy, it's got the airiness and the puffiness. Mm. Mm. The flavour really gets to you. That flavour, the buttery fragrance. And a little bit of the sweet aftertaste too, after the savouriness, because you get that sweetness. Let's try the next phase 3, Paris Brest. Created to commemorate the 1,200km bicycle race of Paris Brest Ferry. Started in 1891. The top is a true space race, sandwiching the hazelnut praline and some hazelnut. The shirt is like a cream puff. Outside is crispy, inside is airy. It's like a soft biscuit. Let me try, let me try. Let me try. Oh, the creme mousseline inside. Oh, it's soft. It's got a nice firmness to the cream as well. Mmm, the hazelnut flavour is so present. And if you get a bit of that hazelnuts, mmm, brings out that much needed crunchy texture. Okay, we don't have much experience with curry breast, but it's definitely way more refined than the ones that we have had in Malaysia. Yeah, the sweetness yeah. is just nice. Next up, we're going to try a tart over here. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it's a passion fruit tart together with some raspberries on top. Anyway, it looks super nice and interesting. Mm. Mm. It's absolutely passion fruit. The tartness and the tanginess. Not too hard. Mm. And I think underneath it's raspberry jam maybe. Oh, it's got a nice balance really. It's more tart and sweet but very harmonious. It doesn't taste too sweet, it doesn't bog you down. Oh, this is good. And that passion fruit cream on top, it's so soft. It's, it's nearly like a like a very soft custard. Yeah, it looks so smooth. Yeah, and the, the biscuit underneath, the tart biscuit, it's got a nice firmness, it's crunchy. It's like McVitie's uh, digestive, but in a firmer, more crunchy texture. And you could taste the toastiness from that biscuit tart over there. That provides you with that savory saltiness. Oh, this is good, this is very good. Oh, and the raspberry is fresh, it's not candied. I don't think it's candied. Key point is the balance between the tartness and the sweetness. The word for it is finesse. This tart has finesse. It's coming from a patisserie. It does. Pastry number four is lemon tart, and someone did mention that it is actually pretty popular coming from store. Eh? So, Quet is gonna try this one. Let's see how tart it is. The lime tart, the sourness is refreshing, it's not overly sour, it tastes like you are eating lime sorbet. Is it? Mm. Oh, that sounds super interesting. Yep. Mm. <laughs> mm. I don't know if it's because of the weather. You are right, Fred, you are right. It is exactly like a lime sorbet. My god, that tartness is so refreshing. But it's not like completely tart. You still taste a little bit of sweetness that is just enough sweetness to balance out that tartness. This is very good. I think the top are like lime zest. Very refreshing pastry. Mmm. I like this. The balance is done so well. Mm. Alright guys, we're on to the final pastry. Remember I told you that Storre has this pastry that's created by Nicolas Storre? And this is it. We call it the Baba Auram, which is Ram Baba. Oh, look at this baby. Right here, beautiful. It sort of looks like a mushroom, doesn't it? By the way, a very quick background on Baba Aram. It was created, I think, back when the King of Poland felt that the Polish cake was too dry. And what Nicolas Storre did was he soaked the entire cake into some wine. And that was the birth of the Baba Aram. Now they actually soak it in rum. And there's a glazing outside. I'm gonna guess. It smells sort of like apricot and there's a candied cherry on top and this could be Angelica. No way! Oh, the rum flavour is so present, so strong but not overly strong and 
the bread within is so soft. Goodness, it's so airy, so soft, but it's moist at the same time. You can tell that all the particles within the bread has been soaked with rum. And the outside, it could be apricot jam, I'm not too sure. It's a jam, it's sweet. So there's a sweetness with that rum. Oh, the texture really is soft. The outside has a little bit of resistance, but after this, just nice puree softness with that moist rum infused texture. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. It's such a joy to eat this. The softness, the moistness, everything goes so well together. And the candy cherry, it does give you that slight refreshing cherry flavor. Of course, it's candied, so it's sweet, but. Mmm. Wow. I have not experienced this before. It's really good. It does tend to get a little bit sweet towards the end though, but I like this very much. Mm. Okay guys, we're gonna finish this up and we'll see you in a bit for plating time. Plating time! So what do you think about Stores pastries? It's a high quality pastry shop. Yeah, definitely. You could tell from the ingredients used. Mm. And I think the key point for this patisserie in general is all the uh, pastries are very refined in a way compared to what we had in Malaysia. Yep. What do you like best from story? I love the peri breast mm. because the hazelnut flavor is very present as I mentioned just now and not overly sweet. Let's go through the pastries one by one. For the croissant, definitely the best croissant we have had up to this point. It really showcases you what croissant in Paris is about. That said, I think there's some inconsistency on the croissant itself. Certain parts are a tad too bitter mm. and then certain parts are just nice. And I think the surface does feel a little bit harder. Just a little bit and the middle is... It, it, the best way to describe the middle is, it, although it's good, but it feels a little less lively. Dry? Yeah, a little bit dry, but still really good croissant. Yeah. Uh, best we've had so far, as I mentioned. As for both the tasks, I think they are done very well. The only way I can put it is ingredients first, pastry after. You could taste the passion fruits own flavor first, the lime's own flavor first. And I think on the lime tart, there's maybe some form of yuzu as well. And the sweetness is just there to perfectly balance out that tartness of both tarts. Yeah. And that is amazing. Mm. As for their signature product, the Baba Aram, I loved it. It's something that I've not experienced before. First time, the first bite was like, <laughs> totally yeah. unexpected. Yeah, that is really, really nice. I really strongly recommend you guys to try it out if you are here. That's it. Towards the end, I did notice that it becomes overly rummy. Mm. Because you could see that the bottle is just rum. soaked in rum. The rum is oozing out of the pastry itself. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like you're drinking rum with a pastry. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. a way. Basically, extremely nice experience. We love it. We will definitely visit again when we have time during this trip. And with that being said, Storia scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it's some high quality pastry right there. Mm. Strongly recommend it if you're in Paris. Drop by and check them out. They are the oldest patisserie in Paris and the qualities of their pastries do really carry that weight. Okay, I guess that's it for our food vlog for this week. Uh, I do apologize for the slight change in location, but now you get the view. The Musée de Louvre right behind us. Hope you enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you're yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell button. Till we eat again in the next food episode Bye. in Paris. Bye.